Gabby Petito and Brian Laundrie were witnessed arguing near the Moonflower Community Co-op in Moab, Utah, at 4.30 p.m. on August 12th. This was just one day before store employee Kylan Schulte was reported missing, and less than a week before her body and the body of her girlfriend, Crystal Turner, were found in the La Salle Mountains. Both women had been shot to death, and one of the women recently said to a friend that if anything happened to them, it would be murder. The women talked at a local bar they frequented about being freaked out by a creepy man. Could that creepy man have been Brian Laundrie? Let's break down the facts. While authorities in the resort town of Moab, Utah, have refused to rule out a possible connection between the women's murder and the disappearance of 22-year-old Gabby Petito, most concede the likely coincidence only that Miss Petito's boyfriend, Brian Laundrie's last post to social media on August 13 was a post geotagged from Moab. Since the two women who were killed were discovered in a condition which caused sexual assault to be suspected, if DNA evidence was recovered, this would be able to be compared to potential suspects. There are enough photographs of Brian Laundrie out there for both employees and regulars at the local bar the deceased women frequented to place him at that bar around the same time that this creepy man was being described by them. Investigators will also have to determine when the last day was that Gabby Petito was confirmed to have been seen or actually heard from. Gabby's mother has expressed doubts about the origin of text messages received after August 25th, the last time the family received a phone call from Gabby. This is said to be the last day that Gabby Petito posted to Instagram, captioning that post, Happy Halloween. A lot of people have been saying that Brian Laundrie should have been charged with stealing Gabby Petito's van after driving the van back to Florida without Gabby being with him. Unfortunately, the law in many states provides that people who have or believe they have permission from a motor vehicle's owner to use it do not commit larceny when they take that vehicle. Therefore, it is the issue of consent whether expressed or implied, which prevents a charge against laundry for auto theft. The same may end up being true with regard to laundry using Gabby's debit card on at least one occasion during the drive back to Florida. Unfortunately, I don't think that naming Brian Laundry as a person of interest in Gabby Petito's disappearance will put enough pressure on him to confess. And while I think that it's a good idea for a large group to gather in front of the laundry home to demand answers, I'm not sure that will bring about anything either. I can't even begin to imagine what Gabby Petito's parents, family, and friends are going through. My heart breaks for the broken-hearted mother who now appeals to a heartless mother to compel her son to tell the truth. If laundry's parents were going to support their son in doing the right thing by manning up to authorities, they would have done so already. Brian Laundrie has no conscience, and neither do his parents. There is no incentive for him to be forthcoming, and every incentive for him to continue to remain silent. If police aren't able to gather any evidence or locate any witnesses to prove that a crime has been committed, they won't be in any position to negotiate any kind of deal with Laundrie's lawyer. As for that lawyer, does he know what Brian Laundrie did to Gabby Petito? Or did he tell Laundry and his father that he doesn't want to know? A lot easier that way, isn't it?